Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of the DCAS Diary. Uh, as you can see from the title, this is uh, the 10th steam up that I've done so far since new um, of the Garrett. Um, you may have seen some of the clips in this particular video before. It, um, now the 10th run of my locomotive coincided with the inaugural run of my friend's uh, extension to his indoor layout. So they came both, both of them came together. What I'd like to talk about in this episode is uh, the things that I've discovered after having the locomotive for a while for 10 runs. In general, the locomotive has been performing uh, fantastically. Apart from that leaking cylinder cover right at the start, I managed to pinch the screws tight and I haven't had any problem with that again at all. One thing that I have uh, come across, and I'll show a picture of that, is the black heat sink that's around one of the flexible steam hoses has actually a split because the flexible coupling was actually too near to a copper steam pipe. I think it touched it. I actually contacted Roundhouse about it and they said it's just cosmetic. There's no problems as long as the flexible pipe doesn't come in contact, direct contact with one of the steam pipes. And it's far enough away under the locomotive that you don't see it unless uh, it's, uh, the locomotive is actually on its side for servicing. Another thing that I've actually done on my own back, and I've done it to all my locomotives actually, is uh, on the safety valve, I've actually marked a line running through the inner and outer part of the valve housing. And why I do this is it's a visual check to see if the inner part of the safety valve, which actually governs the sort of pressure that the safety valve goes off, whether that has changed at all. I do that because on my very first locomotive, I did actually have that. The uh, inner part of the safety valve started rotating, which meant that the safety valve was going off at a lot lower pressure than intended. So another modification I've done is actually put a red mark on the pressure gauge at the 40 PSI point. I've also done this with all my other lo locomotives. I find it better, especially when you're operating them through radio control and maybe you're at a distance, I find it better to be able to read quickly from the press gauge exactly what the pressure is in the, in the boiler relative to its optimal working pressure. So the last thing I wanted to mention in the blog is that I've decided after some experimentation not to follow the recommended method of filling up the boiler with water with the first cold start of the day. If you look in the roundhouse documentation it states that it's net just like all its other locomotives you should fill it up to the top and then remove 30 millilitres and, uh, and then cold start from there. But I'm finding that the locomotive is chucking out so much water before it comes up to optimal pressure and it's able to move. What I'm doing now is filling the boiler up until the water level is just above the water level gauge in the cab. Using the method that I described at the moment, that's working out just fine. It's hardly throwing out any water at all in condensed water and, uh, and uh, it's moving off uh, fine. Okay, so I want to end the vlog now. Until the next vlog, bye-bye.